Can I get you to just uh, tell me your name and title? My name is Connie Rodriguez. I'm a licensed specialist in school psychology and I am the director of psychological and social services in DISD. And Connie Rodriguez is all spelled the normal way? Yes, well actually my full legal name is Concepcion Rodriguez. That's like my Yes. Concepcion. Concepcion Rodriguez. Connie Rodriguez. But I... You would prefer? Well, most people know me as Connie. Okay. So. Um, and I'm, I'm Roland Robin, if you want to. <coughs> and then what you'll do is you'll just look at me where the camera's not there. You know, and, and I'm sure you know the business, the drill, right? And, and Robin, watch your left hand. Okay. If you move it around much, I'll see it. Okay. Okay. I do want some of that in, but not this hand, because right. I don't want to do this. But I'll do some <laughs> gesturing. just gesturing to okay. indicate. Okay. Well, um, Connie, I guess first start with this and, and tell us what is the district doing to um, go out into the schools and give um, reassurance that it's okay for these these students to return. Well, I think throughout the course of the last two weeks, we've been doing quite a few things to try to get information out to the families and to the staff and to the kids as to how the school is responding. I mean, we've gone everything from uh, you know, here's what to do to keep yourself from getting ill and uh, catching any illness. You know, just regular uh, you know health hygiene type of. Uh, activities, covering your mouth, washing your hands, those kinds of activities that are just plain good old common sense uh, with regards to uh, containing any kind of illness, much less this one. Um, so one of the messages that we have for everyone is uh, practice good hygiene, practice the common, uh, you know, the flu season uh, behavior that we all practice to contain the flu. Uh, wash your hands, cover your mouth, Stay home if you're sick. Watch for the signs and symptoms that the doctors have posted on, on various websites and, and in the news and that and information that we've provided as to what the symptoms are for Ebola. And the thing with that we're all focused on right now with Ebola is if you have been nowhere near someone who is contagious and showing the symptoms, that's what sh that is what makes you contagious if you are showing those symptoms. You have nothing to worry about. And what are ways that, uh, from a district's pers the district's perspective, what are ways that you all are go um, is spreading that message to reinforce it's okay for these children to return? Well, this week we are working with the, the student services uh, division is working, you know, counseling services, uh, health services, and psychological and social services, and the youth and family centers are all working together to coordinate our efforts to get the word out to both to both students and staff and families uh, that once the students uh, who are under observation, they are not sick, and I think that's really important to say, they are not sick, they are under observation, uh, once these students return, they are cleared, they are no longer contagious, there is nothing to fear. Uh, they are under observations because we're trying, this, the local and federal government is trying to contain a particular very serious illness. And so in that effort, we're cooperating and so, is our, so are the families, to contain the illness. And they're under observations. Once they return, they have been given the clearance. They are perfectly healthy children and will be just as they were before. Um, I know that you all have been giving some guidance lessons yes. um, from the student services perspective. Yes. And that is, uh, are you able to, to give a little bit of insight of what those guidance lessons would talk about, if you know? Yeah, what we're trying to do is, again, uh, remind the kids about what are the symptoms and what not to worry about. You know, if you're not, if you haven't had this exposure, you have nothing to worry about, number one. Number two, how do we welcome someone back who's been out ill? who's going through a difficult time? And we're wanting to model that for our kids because that's our job. As the adults in their environment, we are the ones that model for them how to, how to respond to someone who's going through a difficult time. So we want the kids to have that model, we want the kids to have that instruction, and to be given permission to do what they're going to naturally do as we remove the fear. Has there been any, I understand that there have been um, some bullying tactics, not by all, but maybe just a select few. Um, how does this guidance lessen um, help model that uh, to dispel the bullying that may happen. Right. 
our guidance lesson is basically reinforcing the same guidance lesson that has been given for years around bullying. All we're doing is just reminding them that bullying is not acceptable and it is not accepted and reminding them of what the process and procedures are around how we're going to respond to a bullying event. Um, you know, so what we're telling our kids and our, and our staff is that bullying is not tolerated and it will be addressed immediately. Um, and I, last couple of questions. Have the actual homebound program students had any sort of psychological services provided to them to help um, since they kind of were, they've been isolated for a 21 day period, what are they going through on that side that you could share with us as far as what student services and psych services is doing? Because they're under observation, we are not able to reach them. And so counseling and supportive services like those were, uh, they've been unavailable. So what our plan is, is, uh, is to uh, make contact with these families on Monday or Tuesday at the very latest and to begin uh, helping those families access those services should they want them. We're going to continue to offer everything we offer to any child on a campus which is through their school counselors they have access to talking to somebody about any concerns they have. Uh, counseling services will be meeting with the families, the counselors on those campuses because they are the point of contact mm -hmm. for a family. They're going to be uh, talking specifically with those children and those families when they return to make sure that everything is fine and if they need additional services for mental health we will be more than glad either through our department or through youth and family uh, give them the support they need. Okay. Is there anything that maybe I've missed that you'd like to cover um, just for general knowledge or the general public to be aware of as it pertains to this especially from the perspective of counseling and uh, psych services? Well I would urge any parent um, if they have any concerns about their child to reach out to the counselor on their campus or to call psychological services at 972-925-8050. Okay. Awesome. We will do, you want to do the two shots now just us talking or do you want to do this? The Let's go ahead and do this, the, the Spanish. Okay. And okay. So let's do our, the Spanish. I'm going to ask pretty much the similar question, basically the same, um, and maybe condense it, but... Um, and I'll answer in Spanish. Yes, you will answer okay. in Spanish. I'm going to ask in English, obviously. That's fine. Okay, okay. No, no worries. <laughs> um, okay, so Spanish interview starting now. Okay. What are, is psych services doing um, to provide maybe some, some um, preparation and lessons as these homebound kids uh, prepare to return next week? Los departamentos de salud, de consejería, del departamento de nosotros que es de psicología y servicios sociales y de los uh, Youth and Family Centers, es, trabajamos eh, juntos para preparar a los niños y a las escuelas que están recibiendo los niños que estaban bajo de observación en la semana que viene. Y lo que estamos haciendo es uh, ofreciendo una lección sobre cómo responder y cómo modelar para los niños el tipo de respuesta que queremos que ellos enseñen a los, que, a los niños que están regresando, porque cuando regresen a la escuela la semana que viene, estos niños van a estar bien, la salud, ellos van a estar, uh, los doctores le van a dar alto y van a poder regresar a la escuela y ellos no van a estar enfermos y no han, no han estado enfermos, están bajo de observación y eso es algo que queremos que los padres se, se acuerden cuando están preocupándose, si se empiezan a preocupar de estos niños, estos niños nunca se estuvieron enfermos, estaban bajo observación para contener la enfermedad. Would you talk about um, maybe the bullying that um, can occur during this time? Pues sí, un peligro cuando um, algo así pasa de que uh, hay alguna enfermedad o alguna cosa que, que, que afecta a la escuela como ebola. Eh, hay el, un peligro que hay es que algunos niños se pueden aprovechar y, y usar esto como una excusa para hacer bullying o para, para maltratar a otros niños. Y lo que queremos que ellos aprendan en esta situación es que ese tipo de comportamiento no es eh, correcto y no se acepta en el distrito. Y vamos a, re, vamos a, a 
aceptar a todos que están aquí. No vamos a separar o a aislar a un grupo o, o al otro solamente porque son diferentes. Um, you all, psych services and student services, that ha are actually counseling in psych services, have, has actually been out at various schools teaching that same kind of yes. um, sí. model sí. To, uh, to, to provide better lessons. Um, can you give me an idea of what those guidance lessons look like and what they would talk about in the, when they're talking to the students? Básicamente lo que hacemos con esas lecciones que estamos ofreciéndole a los niños es enseñándole básicamente las... Eh, lo que los doctores no han dicho de los peligros o, o las señas y los íntimos de ola para enseñarles primero que nada que estos íntimos no están presentes en estos niños, número uno número dos, lo más importante para nosotros es que cuando estos niños regresen ellos van a, eh, su salud está perfectamente bien ya los doctores le van, le, van, le van a dar el alto y no hay ninguna enfermedad y queremos que estos niños sepan cómo recibir para atrás a estos niños que han estado afuera y han sufrido. Y cómo responder con, a una persona con la humanidad de decir, sabes qué, eh, bienvenido, regresa a la clase, mi amigo. Okay. Um, and, let's see, I have two more questions. Would you answer the question if there are any psychological services being provided to any of the students? And if not, what is there a plan? Um, bueno, el plan para nosotros es uh, cuando lleguen los niños el martes, vamos a, 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 a visitar con la familia, con los niños, y a ver si ellos necesitan algún tipo de apoyo durante este tiempo que ha sido tan difícil, pero que no, pero que no podemos, no hemos podido ayudarlos porque estaban bajo de la observación de los doctores. Entonces, cuando regresen, le vamos a ofrecer los servicios que se ofrecen a cualquier niño en esta escuela uh, cuando necesitan algún tipo de apoyo uh, psicológico o social. Entonces, le vamos a ofrecer los servicios de Youth and Family o los servicios de Psychological Services o solamente los servicios de la consejera en la escuela, como, como quiera. Um, and my last question is, is there, or is there anything that maybe I have left that you would like to drive home a specific message maybe to the parents or to, to kids? Bueno, el, para nosotros aquí en el, en el distrito, lo más importante es que los adultos tienen que presentar un modelo de calma para todos. Porque en el miedo y en el pánico no se aprende y no se responde bien. Eh, es en ese momento donde miramos a la información calmamente y decimos, ¿sabes qué? Básicamente, mi hijo, lo que quiero es que haga es que, como siempre, lávate las manos, cúbrete la boca y, y dile a tu mami si estás enfermo para que, ella te de, quede, para que te quedes en casa y no vayas a la escuela enfermo. Uh, si, él tiene algún, si su hijo tiene alguna preocupación, háblele a los niños. Mi hijo, ¿te preocupa algo? Dime lo que te está pasando. Otra cosa y otro modelo que queremos que los padres eh, pongan a sus hijos es que, especialmente para los niños chiquitos, de, los, de, la, de, la, de la edad primaria, que le pongan límites sobre el televisor y las noticias, especialmente sobre el Ebola, solamente porque ellos no entienden mucha de esa información y lo único que van a ver es el susto y, la, y, la, y el miedo en, la, en los ojos y en, la, y en el reportaje. Entonces lo que queremos es que padres, por favor, lim, hagan, pongan límites a eso. Para sus hijos mayores, de 12 para arriba, vamos a decir, hablen con ellos sobre la información y pregúntenle, ¿entendiste bien lo que están hablando? Esto no es excusa para no ir a la escuela, esto no es excusa para maltratar a nadie. Esto es una oportunidad para observar uh, cómo, cómo uh, tratar a otras gentes que están sufriendo. Uh, ¿Cuál es uh, tu nombre de uh, Psychological Services? <laughs> el nombre, el, el contacto sí. de la, de la, del departamento, el servicio de psicología y servicios uh, sociales, el, el número de nosotros, el 972-925-8050. Gracias. Mm -hmm. Great. All right. Awesome. Just sit still for a minute. Yeah. So we're just going to...
me just just someone several three times. times. Two, one, three times. Mm -hmm. And I heard someone say one time. It should be it should be quite often throughout the day. And actually, I was actually just then you find out they have Ebola. Does that mean you could have had it? You could catch it from them because they weren't showing you symptoms. That's what we've been told. Okay, so although Ebola is not easily spread, frequent hand washing is important, and the spread is important in preventing the spread of the illness, and actually that's any illness. Wash your hands, guys. Go to the bathroom. If you sneeze on yourself, if you cut yourself, if you eat, wash your hands. That's gonna prevent anything, strep throat, everything, okay? So not just Ebola. So, 